welcome back to the GSP YouTube channel. I think I got another good one. Um, basically picking back up where we left off with the last video. And so the last video was building a basic startup timing table for an NA engine. And uh, we really need to go through and do that for a boosted engine as well. So let's just dive right into it. This is the, the timing table that we built last time. Um, minus a few things at the end of the video I took out just to make this a, a basic table with no uh, no modifiers or anything in it. So the cool part about this is when you have the NA table built like this, it's really easy to convert this into a boosted timing table because all we really need to do is just split the map in half. Um, the first thing that you need to do is you got to go select a, a, a boost capable map sensor. So we'll go in here and just pick a three bar. Um, so I, I like to just come in here and pick somewhere in the middle of the table, say right here. We'll make that 100 kPa, uh, which is not quite zero PSI worth of boost, but it's pretty darn close. 101.3 is technically zero. So all I'm going to do here is highlight the bottom half, and I'm going to click the R key, which is going to fill uh, all of my values. I'm sorry, the C key, because this is a column, not a row. Or you can right click and hit fill columns. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, you know what, I'm gonna switch this to boost just so you guys that like to display this in, in PSI can see. Um, I'm gonna come in here and we'll make the, the top row here 30. And we're gonna fill again, hit the C key, or you can right click fill columns and so now we've got a table basically split in half and at this point this table is very dangerous because you don't want to put 27 degrees of timing in at 30 pounds of boost on a on your street engine with pump gas that's that's not going to work what you need to do here though is come in and grab say the top two rows uh no let's let's grab a little bit more so we'll we'll actually grab We'll actually grab right here. So we're gra going to grab the bottom two rows of our 27 and bleed that down for mm, five, six, seven rows. Going to hit copy. And we're going to put that in right here at what is our zero. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make this zero just so you guys can see a clear transition. Uh, it doesn't have to be. but Okay, so now... We basically have the top half of our timing table and we have the bottom half of our timing table. And I bet you can't guess what we're getting ready to do. I'm gonna grab this bottom row here and I'm gonna basically highlight the center, just like that. Hit that C key. And now we basically have our old timing table just condensed down into half. Um, the next thing that I typically will try to do is for every bar of boost, cut the timing in half. This is for pump gas. I typically don't ever recommend to anyone to run over a bar boost on pump gas because the problem with pump gas is it changes throughout the, the country and the time of year and, and it's very unpredictable relative to something like race gas or uh, anything ethanol based. Um, that said, what I'll do here is, so a bar of boost is 14 and a half PSI. So that's atmospheric pressure. So when you double atmospheric pressure, you have one bar of boost. Um, if you had one bar of pressure altogether, absolute pressure, that would be NA. That's what manifold absolute pressure stands for. MAP is going off of what atmospheric is. It's establishing off of zero being zero pressure at all. Okay, so 14 is about one bar boost. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually, the first thing I need to do is, is come in here and I'll hit copy on my wide open throttle timing table for NA and I'm gonna hit paste. So I have that there. And then I'm gonna come up here to 30, which is basically double. Uh, we'll go 28, we'll put it in at 28. And I'm gonna hit paste. So I have that both places now. Uh, already was up there, but you get the point. And I'm going to highlight that row that I made. I'm going to click the O key, and we're going to divide it by two. And we're going to come up here to 
this row and you can either multiply this by 0.25 or you can divide it in half twice or you can multiply it by 0.5 twice so times 0.5 and then we'll hit the O key again times 0.5 and we got half so I'll grab this row here and hit that C key fill columns grab this row here hit the C key fill columns and then I'll just take this row right here and right click copy or control C and we'll paste it in the top row because that's close enough so now you see I've, I've got a pretty neat little table here that's that's built based on my NA table uh, you can build this from scratch don't get me wrong if you know you have a boosted application you just put zero here halfway down the table and put in your full timing uh, for for NA and this deal right here would fully function as an NA timing table without any issues at all if you had your map sensor properly selected. You really did have a three bar map sensor even though you had no turbo or, or no supercharger. It functioned fine. It just ran in the bottom half of the table. You're not using the whole table. There's no rule that says that you have to use every cell in every table. You can, you can use it however much of it you want. Um, really that's about it now what I will say is this if you say have E85 and you're running E85 you can get away with more timing that's the point of E85 and uh, you will be able to make more power and, and run more timing but, and that's the reason that you're making more power is the timing it's not the fuel itself um, so what I would do typically so this is, a, this is a really good place to start with a a pump gas setup on on 14 psi or less typically would definitely start you know in the seven ish range and look at your plugs but let's say you wanted to uh, start out and you knew that e85 was going to be your fuel and you went to the to the setup tab here and you set e85 as your fuel type I'm not going to do that because we're talking about timing today but let's say you had e85 set you could come in here to your 14 PSI range and what I would typically do is hit O and add six back and then I'd come up here to the top and I'd hit O and probably three back right because remember we'd play on the half rule and then you can do the same thing just fill down to zero hit the C key fill down to 14 hit the C key and then this thing here really I'm gonna control right key and just bump it up a little bit where it looks nice not that we're gonna be hanging out there same rule tends to apply for um, you know your your typical higher than 30 pounds of boost applications um, above that that's really beyond the scope of the video we, we, you, Probably need to get in touch with me or, or, or hire a tuner to help you out there that has experience in the in the 35 40 psi range uh, you really got to start reading plugs pretty heavy up there you got to be really conscious of your fuel type you got to be really conscious of your compression ratio and your and your spark plug heat range but in general speaking this would be a pretty good timing table then for uh for e85 and truth be told we really on e85 we could probably get away with a few extra degrees here um in the zero re region but this is again it's a really good place to start that's what we want to do here is just get started um, don't don't necessarily expect for this to be our final timing table um, you can do a lot in the cruise region you know riding around on, on the interstate or, or in, in you know 55 miles an hour you can you can do a lot there too as well with the with the timing to make your your car run good and and um, handle some bucking stuff and that's probably what we'll talk about in the next video as well but uh, just wanted to do this uh, addendum to the last video and wanted to make this this part two and thankfully because we built off of the last one this one's gonna be pretty short and sweet so you know what to do you gotta do the like you gotta do the subscribe uh, shoot me a comment if you have any questions about this or an email and I'll help you as much as I possibly can um, until next time, hope everybody is doing well and your projects are going well, and I will catch you on the next one.